but you're never going to get a pure plus in tax law, right? There's a plus, there's got to be a minus. The minus is you will not get a tax benefit up front. So if you make a contribution into a Roth, that will not be tax deductible ever. And if you convert, it generates taxable income. So you really have to balance which of these is better. Is it better to pay the tax now and get tax-free growth? Is it better to not convert, pay taxes later? And we'll talk about how to make that decision. But as you convert, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. Let's say that you came in, you made a $5,000 non-deductible contribution to an IRA, and this is your only IRA here, and you're going to convert that. So it's 5000 it's after-tax money. If I convert it, I would think that that would be tax-free, and it might be. But one thing to keep in mind is that while we think of having four or five different IRAs sometimes, to the IRS, you have one big IRA that might be invested at different places. So before your financial advisor can tell you how much of that conversion will be taxable, they need to know where all your retirement dollars are, where all your IRAs are, you have a simple or a SEP, that's going to take into consideration. 401ks, 403bs, other qualified or employer plans aren't necessarily aggregated, but it's a good idea to talk about those as well because you want to look at your entire retirement situation to make that decision. How it's taxed in terms of basis, I won't really go into that. That can get a little bit complicated. The important part to know is if you're asking your advisor whether you should convert or not, or how much you should convert, and maybe you have a CD at a bank that you opened as an IRA that you just forgot about, and you don't tell your advisor about it, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If they don't have all the data, it's not going to make sense what comes out the other side. So that's the benefit, tax-free income and growth. The downside is taxable income up front. So how do you decide which is better? Should I convert or should I not convert? There are three factors that you want to look at. One is primarily what your income is going to look like, your taxable income. Is it likely to be lower in retirement than it is now? That would argue against a conversion. If it's going to be the same or higher, it would argue for a conversion because if your income in is as high as it is when you're working. Under the tax situation we have now, I think it's very unlikely that your taxes would go down in the future, which I know can sound political, but it's more historical. Um, if you look back over the last 80 years, taxes have been lower than they are today about 13% of the time at, fe at the federal level. So the chances that they're going to go down, I think, are less than the chances that they will go up. The reason I say look at your taxable income is for a lot of people, especially retirees who are above 70 and a half, sometimes the income that you're forced to recognize from taxes, from a tax standpoint, can be different than what you actually need to spend to live on because you have required minimum distributions from traditional retirement plans. You do not have those on Roths. So if you convert all of your accounts to Roths, you'd have no RMDs. Might not be the best thing to do, but for some of you it might make sense. The second factor to look at is where is the tax money going to come from? If you have money that you're willing to devote to the taxes that will be generated when you convert from some outside source, meaning not from your retirement accounts, that makes it more likely that a conversion would make sense. If you have to take the money from your retirement account, it's less likely that the conversion makes sense. And I would look at you know, what you can pay from cash flow, you know, regular income, also what you can do with investments that are outside your retirement plans. That's also another reason why I think partial conversions for a lot of people make more sense than a full conversion. Let's say you decide I can spend or am willing to spend $20,000 in taxes in order to 
take advantage of the Roth. Well, whatever tax, you know, whatever you could convert that's going to generate a $20,000 tax liability might be where you want to start looking. So that's factor number two. Factor one was what's going to happen to your income. If it's going to go up, it argues for a Roth. If it's going to go down, it argues against a Roth. If it's going to stay the same, it's roughly neutral. Second factor, where's the tax money going to come from? The third factor, and the one that I think is most important, is how long is the money likely to stay in the Roth? When Roths came out, we talked about this as a factor of age. And I think we were wrong. And I'll give you an example on why I think that's the case. I was working on a case study with an advisor and a tax attorney in Florida. And the client had a large IRA balance and was in his early 80s. Now it is very tempting to say this person has a very short time horizon until you dug a little bit more into the situation and he was a very wealthy person and knew that he was not going to withdraw from his IRA at all during his life or didn't want to. And his goal for this money was to leave it to his grandchildren. And he had an estate tax issue that he was planning around. So for that particular client, it made sense to convert absolutely everything because he was going to leave that to his grandchildren. They get to take out distributions over their life expectancy. So this money would stay for a long period of time. Now, if you had an identical aged person there in their early 80s and this is money for their own use, then converting probably wouldn't make sense. So it's not really age. It's what's the goal for the money and how long is it likely to stay in. And if you widen that out a little bit, I think it's the third reason why partial conversions might make sense for a lot of people. Because if you think you're going to use the majority of your retirement assets for your own use, but you've planned a cushion, right? None of us really want to risk running out of money. So there's a set amount that we might say, okay, I want to make sure that at the end of what my life expectancy would be, I have enough to cover an extra couple of years in case I live a while longer. It might make sense to convert that, not convert the rest. Does that make sense? And I know I talk about partials a lot. That's not to say that everyone should do a partial. There is no way that I can look at a room of 70 people and tell you what you should or shouldn't do. That is the basic story of the Roth. The big benefit is tax-free income. The big downside is paying taxes up front. And when you decide what you want to convert, you need to look at what's my income likely to do. Where am I going to pay the taxes from? Can I afford to pay the taxes? Generally a bad idea to do something that you can't pay the taxes on. So you do need to pay. And the third is how long is the money likely to stay in? And that's the basic story, but I think it would also make sense to talk about a few strategies. Because I think one of the things that you can do when you're talking to your advisor are there are some very interesting sort of tactical things you can do. I was working with a business owner who had a net operating loss. I don't know if we have any business owners in the audience. But if you are self-employed or a business owner, there's what's called a net operating loss. My, money, my business just lost money this year. And for kind of obscure tax reasons, if my business loses 100000 I don't get to carry forward exactly the 100000 to the next year. It's actually a smaller amount. So one strategy to consider if you're in that situation is maybe I want to convert enough to offset the loss and soak all that up. 